Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. So as you can see by the title there, I'm going to do a huge experiment today. Whoops, and I just discovered I don't have any uh, floor protection underneath me. Hang on just a second. Here's a, here's a mat that protects some of the floor. Okay, um, the experiment is and I'm doing this because my good buddy Mike Rooney is right over there. Here, let me show you around the room real quickly. There's Mike. There's Richard and David. And Rusty has stepped out for the moment. Five of us painting here on the back porch in Ocracoke. For Mike and I, fifth annual paint out in Ocracoke. Um, here's the subject matter that I'm planning to do. Can you see that? Not very well. Let me try to hang on, hang on. I know that's bad. There you can barely see it, right? Okay, so it's a picture I took yesterday here on the island when we're riding on bikes. And today it's been totally cloudy all day until right now, of course, <laughs> now that we could be out plein air painting. Uh, so this is a different kind of plein air painting. It's called go out, take pictures, come back. <laughs> Come back and paint. <laughs> Semi plain air painting. <laughs> um, but what I'm hoping to do, I'm being influenced by M Mike. Um, I'm hoping to do combine my technique with what is called the Cape Cod School of Painting, which is especially about underpainting. So there's a, there's enough similarity. There's enough overlap. Between, I feel like, I think, between the way I paint normally and the Cape Cod that I'm, I'm hoping I can do this. Now, so this may be a grand turning point in my painting career, or it may be a blip on the screen and I never try it again. We don't know. But I'm intrigued enough by it to give it a try. Let me describe, as I understand it, and Mike's right over there, 15 feet away from me. So if I screw up real bad, he can correct me. As I understand it, I'm going to just drop two. This is not a this is not a painting. This is a diagram. Okay, let's label this Cape Cod. Why do they call it Cape Cod, Mike? Because it was developed in Cape Cod. Okay, it's especially good technique for painting New England. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> oh, great for the keys too, which is where Mike paints half the year. Okay, dividing your 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 canvas, you're painting your subject into dark, the dark part of your painting and the light part of your painting. Mike, does anybody do this like for pet portraits or oh, portrait? They do it for everything. Okay. Hmm. Whoa. Okay. So in, 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 this is as I understand it. So you understand this is me trying interpreting Mike. Mike, you already interpreted Cape Cod and so on. So this is the way I understand it. Let's start over here with the light. So you're, you've got a subject matter, the outdoors landscape, the sun is out. So the sun is hitting some things. We call that light. Things that are blocked by the sun, that's shade. So that's dark and light. In the light area, we're gonna underpaint basically in three warm colors. The three warm colors are red, orange and yellow okay so this only pertains forget forget everything that's in the shadow that's over here that we're not talking about that we're just talking about the the things that are in ostensibly in this case the sunlight the things that are light we're going to underpaint in these three colors okay according to the cape cod way of thinking red is the coolest and yellow is the warmest. And if you follow me often, you know that I quibble with this slightly, but that's not enough to, not enough to quibble with it right now. I'm going to go with, with their formula. And then orange is medium. OK, you with me? So we're going to underpaint everything that's in the sun, just to be simple. It's in the sun, it's going to get underpainted, red, orange, or yellow. If it's in the sun, but it's cool, like a blue sky, that's cool. So we're going to use the coolest 
of these colors to underpaint, say, blue sky. The things that are warmest in the sun, we're going to paint with the warmest of these. Now, real important caveat, let's say I've got a yellow, in this case, a yellow uh, kayak. And Mike, you correct, correct me here. If I've got a yellow kayak, well, that's very warm. So I want to underpaint it with the warmest color, which is yellow. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't work. You don't ever underpaint with the same color you're going to overpaint well, with. Yellow is the exception. Okay, good, good, good. Because I was that's that because that was gonna be my next question. Okay, good. Yellow's the exception. Let's go to let's say I've got an orange kayak then. I've got an orange kayak. I don't want to underpaint that in orange. I paint that, underpaint that in yellow. Okay, so got it. Thank you. That because that was one of the first questions I was gonna run. So uh, now let's so a couple couple clarifications. Uh, I'm gonna say underpainting. Um, does not equal, okay, let me start this again. UP, that stands for underpainting. U dot underpainting does not equal, and I'm going to use the term like I always do, overpainting, even though nobody else uses that term, but I do. Okay, UP does not equal OP, with the exception of yellow, except for yellow. Good. Are you with me? Y'all can be fantastic Cape Cod painters at the end of this video. <laughs> Good luck with that. I got Mike right over here to keep me keep me straight. Um, I'm doing this, by the way, because I really like his paintings. I like the way they look. I like a whole lot of things about them, and it's similar enough to what I already do that I'm hoping it'll be, you know, like we say, I don't know if this will be a turning point, grand turning point in my painting or not. We'll find out. Okay, so warm, cool, medium, warm, under light. Underpainting does not equal overpainting, except for yellow. And then match, this is really important, asterisk, match values. Okay, so what I mean is, what that means is when you finished your underpainting phase and you took a black and white photograph of your underpainting, it should look like the same values as your finished painting. That means, for instance, I, I mentioned that, that the blue sky is the coolest thing in the light, so you're going to use red. But wait a minute, red is dark. Okay, so there's where you don't paint it red, you paint it, unless it's whatever, <laughs> you paint it pink, red with white in it. And by the way, Mike and I both agree on this, not cad red, because cad red plus white equals sickly bubblegum pink. I mean, maybe there's a place for sickly bubblegum pink, but not in my world. So it's a magenta red. It's a cool red. Uh, my favorite in oil is um, permanent rose. Alizarin sometimes will work, but a magenta, a quinacridone red. So it's cool. So, but you you what you lighten it because it's going to go under sky. Sky's not dark, so it's a very light red. Uh, and so on. That that's that's enough. I'm gonna that's I'm talking you to death. Let's finish. So in the dark world, you're going to underpaint everything dark in cool colors. And the cool colors are purple. I'm doing all this by the way to try to get it clear in my mind. You understand that? Purple I'm gonna be looking at this cheat sheet while I'm painting here. <laughs> the three cool colors are purple, blue, and green, again, in order from coolest to warmest, okay? But once again, you don't want the underpainting to equal the overpainting. You're not the same color, and you want to match values. So if you, if you're, let's say, uh, I guess I stand right here. I won't, I won't turn you around, but I look outside the porch over there. There's a, a wooden fence in the shadow, okay? There's a wooden fence in the shade. So we're talking shade, it's over here. And because it's brown, that's pretty warm. So I'm gonna underpaint that brown fence with green, because it's the warmest. If the, uh, like I look under the underbrush, under the, in the foliage over there, if it's real dark, it gets purple. Somewhere in between it gets blue, because that's my understanding. <laughs> that's about as much as I understand or don't about Cape Cod right now. 
and it's great to be able to do this with Mike right over there to correct me <laughs> when I screw up. Okay, now, Cape Cod meets Dan Nelson. Hmm, because you know how I start my, I, in the last year or two, I start my paintings with these big abstract, and I'm, I'm going to keep on doing that. But now my question is, well, if I'm going to do pink under the sky, here's, again, here's my, here's my subject matter. Here's my reference. You can see, but maybe, can you see the sky? Ooh, I know that's bad, sorry. Anyway, it's a painting of uh, part of the island here. It's got a palm tree in it, blue buildings. It's real tourist, this is going to be a tourist, tourist, tourist type painting. I'm going to have people in shorts, tank tops, walking, you know, eating snow cones and cotton candy and with a dog and a bike, and whatever. It's a tourist painting, and I think there's enough to fill up a 30 by 40. Um, it's got a night, it's an evening light. It's got a nice blue sky. So blue sky with clouds, it means my skies are going to be pink with orange clouds. So does that mean I do my big abstract thing the opposite of that? Okay. So I'm, I don't. I already don't know how to paint Cape, Cape Cod School, and I'm already messing with it. <laughs> and, <I've, laughs> and I've got blue buildings. Okay, what the heck? Close enough. It, it's it, there's a lot of cool in here, even though the light is warm. There's a lot of cool. So I'm gonna. I'm going to paint, um, there's a lot of cool, that means my, my abstract swatch is going to be warm. Okay, so this is the part that, see, see I'm not willing to let go of this, this aspect of my, of my painting technique. I, I like this a lot. So I want to see, I want to find out here if I can combine, uh, If I can combine what I what I do with Cape Cod, I'm I'm, a, I'm optimistic. I think I can, but we'll find out. We'll all find out together. Let's do just a little bit more yellow. Okay, pretty typical start for me, right? Big abstract swooshes. Let me take a take a minute and take a picture of this step by step. So if I want to see in the future, now how did I do that again? I'll be able to see it, okay? My reference, maybe yours. There we go. Okay, as you know, the next thing I do is I start then, I don't have to wait for that to dry. I start uh, rendering, drawing this subject matter. Thank goodness I have these big, long brushes, which really do help when you're doing a 30 by 40 inch painting. Okay, horizons nice and low. It's a decent photograph. Um, now, see, I don't know. Mike, are you allowed to do any sketching <laughs> underneath the Cape Cod? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you do it in pencil normally? Yeah, okay, Mike. I got Mike turned on, maybe. Maybe I got Mike turned on to those, my jumbo black pencils. Okay. Uh... start again so there's a big big palm tree right in the perfect location here right at the one third third spot uh, maybe over, over a little bit more okay oh come on stand up. Okay, and then there's a building. I'm just going to start drawing. This might be a good, good time for me to take a little break here because I'm going to be drawing for little while here and I think it's going to get kind of boring so let me draw for a while and then I'll let you guys go um, there's a roof everything in this painting needs to feel like tourists 
needs to feel it's kind of an island culture and I, I mean I mean like like Caribbean island that's what it looks like it looks like a vacation in the Caribbean actually but it's not it's actually a vacation um, it's actually a vacation in Ocracoke you don't normally associate pine trees with North Carolina but you do out here Okay, so um, at the moment I'm drawing the purple. One trick that, that I use not infrequently is uh, just for the sake of variety, don't do, the, don't do the drawing. If you're drawing with paint, if you're drawing with brushes, uh, let the color migrate. Don't do the whole drawing in the same color. Does that make sense? Because you get a more, little more interest if you use a couple different colors. So I'm sure I know I'm gonna I'm gonna migrate toward the the red and magenta that color in a minute. Uh, of course, right now I'm just I'm behaving like myself. I'm not painting Cape Cod. I'm just I'm just drawing. At the moment, my my concern is not with color. My concern is uh, drawing. So I don't, I'm not worried about me hardly thinking about color right now, other than the color I'm drawing with. Uh, it's pretty flexible. Okay, yeah, good. We'll just... By the way, little quick, quick little funny little trick, insight. Um, well, here's an important principle. Our vertical, let me start here. Horizontal lines in your painting are the most groggy, dozing, peaceful, non-energetic, uh, what do you call a sleepwalker? Somnambulant? Somnambulant. Okay, horizontal lines are boring. Vertical lines are second most boring. Perfectly vertical. Perfect horizontal. Perfect. Now, there's a place for horizontal if you want, you know, that's why, you know, like a beach painting, you know, horizon, be, you know, it's very peaceful because all the lines are horizontal. Likewise, vertical, second most uh, sleepy shape. Diagonals are dynamic. So just, and I do a lot of architecture. Um, and these, the little steps coming down off the porch, the railing, often a very good shape anywhere in your, almost anywhere in your painting a, a diagonal of a, of a railing coming off off the porch it's just one of those funny little things to keep in mind likewise pretty much anytime you paint a tree in your plein air painting pretty much any time so not all the time but pretty much any time you're painting a tree you don't make it straight up and down even if in real life or in the photograph the tree is straight up and down you don't Usually, unless you're really going for peace, 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 putting people to sleep, you put it at a slight angle. For one thing, we don't we don't like to see this is a redundancy. If I put a vertical line right here, telephone pole, whatever, it lines up exactly with the edge of my canvas. It's sort of like one of those lines is not necessary. And this one I can't do anything about. So this line is a mistake. So I've got a telephone pole here. I need to do it like this or like this, probably like this. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to keep drawing here for a while. And uh, I'm stop irritating these guys who are trying to be really quiet because they don't want you to know that they're here. <laughs> so a little quick break here. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so I have finished drawing, as you can see, basic outlines. Uh, <laughs> one irony here, this, this big red swoop curve is looking very much like the palm tree. That's just an accident. I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but there, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And one good thing about it, as I was talking about earlier, in the photograph, and I don't know how you can see it. The palm tree is vertical and tilted at about uh, four degrees to the right. Uh, whereas this, this red accidental curve 
slightly curved, and all of a sudden I don't look, this is just pure action, pure action. I'm going, oh wow, yeah, a curved pine tree, I mean a curved palm tree, is more exciting than a straight one. So yeah, I'm gonna go with it, but that's an action. Okay, so here I am, drawing's done. Uh, a couple comments, I've made this a palm tree over here, taller than it is in the photograph, so that I have more pleasant sky tree. Um, of course, I added people and a dog. I'm, I'm really, really thinking here about human interest. I've added a bicycle. There's a window over here. Instead of the window closed, I made the window open. Stuff that indicates human interaction. There may be smaller people here in the back. I'm probably I'll add more than that before we're done. Um, okay, now to start. It's, it's slopping in some color, but uh, but thinking Cape Cod. It. So I'm going to do it to, to help keep myself straight. I'm going to start with the light area okay. over here. The light, it's red, orange, yellow, cool, medium, warm. Okay, and uh, I'm going to start with the warm now warm also includes things mike let me let me mike let me think out loud think out loud with me for a minute here um when we're finished the underpainting in cape cod we want the whole canvas covered right we don't there's nothing there's no white blank canvas on there. okay so things that are white or white <laughs> things that are white in in the sub in the final painting we we underpaint them yellow right Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, that's what I'm thinking. Because think about it. If you're if you're on planet Earth, if anybody outside planet Earth is watching this, then bear with us for a minute. <laughs> if you're on planet Earth and the sun's shining, our sun, even at high noon, our sun is yellow. Our sunlight, we happen to be circling a yellow star. Not a white one, red one, purple one, but the yellow star. So the light is always warm. And by the way, some of you don't know that. You can't see that. The proof of that, then, is to look at a shadow. And shadows are not gray. I knew shadow is blue, blue purple. Compliment because it's the absence of yellow. Anyway, okay, I'm, that's another lecture altogether. So think about it. If there's white clouds, I keep sounding like the Yankee to myself. I know. For all you said, there's white. There's white clouds. <laughs> uh, they're not really white, are they? We think of them as white, but if we're, we're on, then nothing. There can't be anything in our in nature, in the landscape, that's brighter, lighter, brighter than the sun, and the sun's yellow. So, okay. if you underpaint a white cloud yellow, you're well on the way, and then you're going to overpaint it with some white paint, but you've got the yellow poking through. It's really going to give you, and, I, and again, I look at Mike's paintings and go, man, I think that's a little positive. Okay, so I'm going to start anything that's white, light, or very warm, I'm going to do yellow. Okay, enough talking. Let's do that right now. Make some nice big stuff. Okay, so again, now let's get back to the photograph here and say, so let's put some clouds up here. Get pure yellow. Hmm. I can do that. Huh? <laughs> okay, so here's some yellow. Now, the difference between traditional Cape Cod and what I'm doing, of course, is I'm, uh, there's, here's the, the aspects of Dan Nelson that I'm going to keep. Number one, messy, really messy. And I don't think that's a problem, but I'm painting, I'm painting very transparent. So as far as I can tell, that's kind of different from the traditional Cape Cod. It's under transparent. I don't know. Is that different? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Good work, Mikey. <laughs> he said that they don't they don't do it. They don't they don't do it transparent. But Mike does because he's watched so many of videos. Mike and I have a good relationship. He's pushed me in some good directions, and maybe I pushed him in some good directions. That's why we keep doing this. This is the sixth time we painted together, Mike, for a week. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so there, there's all the so all of this stuff back here. I'm, you can see it's real warm sunlight coming through at a real low angle be, behind all these behind all behind this building behind behind this and so on. So I'm liking that. Okay, now orange. So 
No, wait, 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 wait. I almost doing that wrong. Hang on, hang on. Almost made a mistake. I was going to do orange in, this, in the blue sky, which is my way of thinking. I often do orange. But no, no, no. This is pink. This, the fake cod is pink. And rather, I'm going to achieve my pink not by adding white to it, but by uh, making it very transparent. And anytime I want to go real transparent on the acrylic, I usually, instead of just using water, if you use water, it'll just all run down off your canvas. I use a medium. So here's, ooh, yeah, see, that's a pretty pink. Now, you, if you watch me, if you're one of my regulars, you, you've heard me say before, in the transparent world, there's no such thing. There is no such thing as transparent red. Um, transparent red just turns into a sickly bubblegum pink. It's not pretty. It's not a pretty color. So you have to go with a magenta, quinacridone, permanent rose, something like uh, magenta. So there's my pink. Yeah, and then there's some down here too. Of course, I'm you know, my my pink and my own my pink and my yellow are mixing a little bit. But I'm gonna tell you that. Let's see if it gets pink yellow. Now, as far as I can tell, everything else. I don't have any orange. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. The. Uh, <laughs> now I'm stuck. Okay, so the, the light part of the tree. I know you can't see this very well. Oh, let me. I, I did, there we go. I did the lighter version. So what is the sun is hitting these palm trees at the top and making them green. And it's sunlight, right? We're in, we are in the we're in the light column. We're not ignore this over here. We're just over here. We're just on right now. I'm just doing sunlight. And the sun is hitting the tree, palm trees, and making them green. That's a mid. Green is not real warm over your cool. It's mid. So I'm going to go with my mid form. Behind. Now, nah, goodness knows, I think it might be this part enough. I ought to be able to do this without, without much thinking. I'm just going slow to try to up through that. So the orange here is uh, underneath underneath foliage. Now I already know from my experience, I already know that orange under foliage is is a really good effect. That, that's 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 no mystery there. Most of my underpainting foliage for me is either orange or purple. In the second depending whether it's the warm or the cool side. So that, that's standard for me. Um, oh, you know what? There's a big sign here that is partly in sun. In fact, I'm going to paint with a rag here just for a second, see if I can take any of this off. See this big square? That's a sign. A typical, typical tourist sign with, you know, cotton candy, rent your bikes here, rent your kayaks here, rent your, you know, sign up for your fairy ride here. One of those kind of things. Whoops. This is not coming off. Okay, so here's what I have to do. Let's just stop the presses. I have to turn that back to white again. And it take a minute for that to dry. Because if, it's, if this is a quote unquote white sign and it's in, it's in the sun, then what, it, what color is supposed to be underpainted? Yellow. And I've got too much orange. I don't, I don't want to stick. I do want to stick closer. Okay, it'll take a minute for that to dry. But hey, while I'm doing white, let me see what else I can do here real quick. Is there any other color for that? This might be the biggest difference between what I normally do and pig pie. As you know, when I do my point painting, um, Before I go to oils, I have a lot of white. White is the last thing I do. Hmm, that's going to be interesting. In Cape Cod, you don't end up with any white on your canvas when you go to the whole thing. So that'll be an interesting event. I'm not sure how I feel about that. 
in, in Cape Cod, uh, when you go to the overpainting, you don't have any white on your canvas. All right, that, you have, that's yellow. You paint it yellow. It's white. Right, no, no, no. When you, when you go to the overpainting, when you're finished with the underpainting, there's no white on your canvas. Right. So that's a big, that's a big change for me because I, before I go to oils, yeah, get, get the highlights back and that's right, and glaze on. That's correct. That's correct. That is correct. That, there you go. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I gotta wait for that to dry. Let me see what else I can do while I'm, while I'm waiting. And I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, though, just in case. This, this again, this is a classic case in landscape. The big flat blink. You know, it's not huge, but it's big enough in this painting. Remember what I say about big flat planes in your painting. You don't paint them big flat. I'm learning this. I'm learning this part partly because I keep telling you guys over and over. You're gonna, you're gonna slash that, you're gonna cut that with some shadows. And in this scene, there's no, no question of where the shadows are coming from, trees, buildings, whatever. Um, which direction, which direction? I think this way. And it could go either way, depending on what it's a shadow up, but I think this way. It, I'm making that point. So part of this this sign is going to be in this column. Sun hitting it. And part of the sign is going to be in this column. Uh, in the shade. Um, I can take a little quick break because I, I need for that to dry. I just did white to, to, to cover up the orange that I don't want there. So I have to wait for that to dry before I can take some pick. I'll be back in the all right, so uh, that's dry enough. Um, and uh, so I'm going to cheat. I mean, uh, I'm not cheat. I'm going to switch over to the shade column right now, especially for this sign right here. Again, the, in the photograph, let me look, because I've got several versions of this. So it's a white thing. It's got sun on it. It's very cool. So it's the it's blue. It's blue. It's mid. It's mid. Okay. So I'm going to use a. Um, bear with me while I think out loud to try to learn new stuff. Mike and I were talking to him about the way by the way. Still giving him tips. Now the shape of this shadow. I guess that'll be. Okay. And again, here's, I'm, I, here's where I'm going to depart from from Cape Cod because I think that's messy with what most Cape Cod people do. But okay, so I've got myself into let's look into the uh, shadow side of the equation now. Let's let's proceed. Basically, white umbrella. I'll just take things as I, as I figure them out. Objects that are in the shade but warm, I'm going to go on the paint with the warmest cool of the, the cool, warmest of the dark, which is green. So if it's red, yellow, orange, brown in the shade, I underpaint it with green. There you go, there's a nice little chunk of a palm tree. And likewise, this board is green. And these boards are green. And again, here's where I'm probably departing from the real Cape Cod people. Because I'm, I'm painting outside the line more than, it's more than you might do that. These structures over here, they're painted blue and they're in the shade. 
so I don't want to paint them blue because it's going to be redundant. So I'm going to paint them purple. I believe that's what Mike suggested. Same thing here. Um, okay, heck, I'm going to cheat right here. I'm just going to flat out, flat out cheat. Um, because otherwise I'm getting confused. Um, I changed, now this sign is in the sun. It was in the photo, it's all in the shade, but now I'm making it half straight and half sun. That means this part up here is now in this column. Ah, I just figured it out. It, it's actually painted blue in real life, right? The, the people that built this painted it blue, and I want it to look blue. But now it's in the it's in the sun, so it's sun it's blue with sunshine on it. What does that mean? Cool, red. That means red, exactly. Uh, and still pinkish, but not as light, not nearly as light as the sky. Okay, so there we go. It's red. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is gonna be. Dan Nelson. You know, I'm not trying to get into the club. I'm just trying to do better painting. Period. And I don't care if I no, I don't care if anybody ever looks at me and says, you need to touch. No, I don't care. Um, okay, now this, since I got purple on my purple is the, the coolest and the darkest. Oh, I know exactly where that goes. And Mike, uh, because I'm painting very, well, no, you, you do this too. I don't have to knock it. I don't have to get it right the first time. I can go back and darken it later, do more layers you know, in the underpainting stage. Right, right, right. Okay, let's, let's, let's dark. Let's umbrella. Let's dark. Let's dark. Let's drop somebody's head. We'll worry about that later. What happened to our music over there? Did y'all turn off the music? Oh, <laughs> okay. If that's what you want. Um, okay, so this tree, put down. Put down those. I mean, let's, let's do this tree, big tree up here. It's green. Oh, and I've already done some orange, but it, not enough. So let's, let's do more. Get the palm fronds up here. You know, get it actually more in the shape of it. And, and by the way, here's a quick, here's a little tip. Pretty standard. This tree in the photograph barely, 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 barely touches the top of the photograph. Well, that's a mistake, the barely, barely part. You don't want two objects kissing. You don't want, to, you don't want them coterminous. You don't want them terminating at the same spot. So I'm going to be sure to punch this tree up through the top of the, of the painting. Otherwise, I'd end up with basically one shape across that entire boundary, and that's 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 a no go. So there, got that. I just can just you know raise up the tree a few inches. Okay, and then we down here. So I'm, that was uh, for a minute there. I, I was really trying to. <laughs> I was here, then I went to this column. I'm gonna go back. Let's go back to the dark column again. Let's get some shadows in here. Let's start with the big stuff. So here, over here, is a big wall house um, that is painted blue. And I, and I feel like in the photograph, in this scene, that, that is a very touristy blue. <laughs> and it's in the shade. So the underpainting, in this column, and it's blue, so it's cool. The cool the answer is purple. So the underpainting of this blue house in the shade is purple. That was easy. That was easy. Now, and oh, and it's got to be the right 
right value, the right lightness toughness. Um, there's a bicycle down here somewhere. Oh, there's a little bush down there too. Okay, I feel like this is too bad. Bear with me here a second. I'm going to paint with a red to get this. So I got that for a second. See, here's the pattern. These two rules apply to both columns. I should have put these rules all the way across, not, not just under the right. So match value. Way too bad. Easy, easy fix. Now, anytime you paint with a rag, make sure you're painting with a rag. You don't just start wiping off like you're cleaning the dishes. You make interesting marks with a rag just the way you would with a brush. Always making interesting marks. Like you said. I know I didn't need to say that. But some of somebody out there needs to hear that. Okay? I always get nervous when my students pick up a rag because they turn off their painting brain and turn on their scrubbing with a rag brain. That's not your painting. Okay, there. I think that's pretty close to there. Hmm. Okay. okay. So this is a painted almost white Painted almost white. Mike, do you always use ultramarine blue or can you use a little phthalo? In the Any blue. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. This is the, the fascia, the name of that. Fascia board. Um, the name of that architectural element. Um, I've, I've put a lattice in reality. There's not lattice down here. They've got vertical boards. Um, but I just happen to know that traditional American lattice has a, a warmer emotional feeling than the vertical boards. So I'm going with the more traditional idea. You know, a little, little bit more Norman Rockwell-ish. Um, lattice is good in four. <laughs> Let's get that. A little more Thomas Kincaid-ish. Lattice is good in four. Over here is the best part of the building. Down there is brown. That means it's a warm, it's in the shade, and it's warm. Therefore, green. Okay. For those of you that just tuning in, perhaps. I'm doing an experiment today. Because I'm here with Mike Rooney, who paints in the Cape Cod School. Because I like the painting, and because the Cape Cod has enough in sync with what I do that it's not a great, great dark. So I'm trying to do a combination of my technique and now I've got all this stuff down here at the bottom. And what color is that? Bear with me for a moment. I have got to find out. Um, there we go. So here's a dark version. That photograph of brown looks orange, actually. It's just dirt. Yeah, it's just dirt. Well, for a second, I thought it might be orange brick, but it's, this is not that kind of fancy of a place. Here it is lighter. Yep, it's just orange dirt. Okay, so let me think here out loud for a minute. So it's in the shade. All of this is in the shade. Now, this is a pavement road. That's cool. This is warm. So warm shade. Warmest. Hmm, yellow. No, 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 I'm in the shade. Sorry. Warmest. Shade, warm, green. 
That is crazy. I would never paint this green. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mildly allergic to green. Some of you know that. <laughs> My mantra is a little green goes a long way. So I've never painted, I've never underpainted um, <laughs> like that. And ironically, or coincidentally, maybe, I will tell you what I what I have done that's related to this. Ironically, that's also complementary to what um, By the way, I don't, if anybody ever interested, I'm painting a 30 by 40 inch canvas on a Soltec easel. I didn't know if that was possible. It, it just barely goes up to barely goes up to 30 inches. So. <laughs> I'm quite amazed that you can paint a 30 by 40 on a Soltec piece. Happily surprised. Okay, so that's I, oh, I was going to say. So even though I've never underpainted, and, it, and I'm not sure that's the right lightness darkness, so I'll, I'll correct that as I go along. But I, I swear I've never painted. <laughs> <laughs> under painting like that green oh my goodness no it's got to be darker okay so it's, it's going to get darker than that um, but then this is blue gray asphalt over here and right in between is a strip of concrete so you understand concrete orange gravel dirty white concrete and gray asphalt so think with me out loud here i can't wait to see you guys chat here so um, we're in the shade over here. The warmest is that. The coolest is purple. We don't blue. Yeah, this is purple. This is blue. <laughs> Mike, this is a hoot. <laughs> I, I, I am doing things. This is crazy. I'm doing things I've never done. I would never do this. Okay. Oh, I was going to say up here, green under orange. Now that that I resonate with because sometimes I do complementary. That that's and Mike says um, Cape Cod is not complementary. Exactly, it is sometimes accidentally. Is that a fair way to put it, Mike? Sometimes accidentally, it is the complementary, but but it's not. It's it's this system which makes sense to me. I understand this. Yeah, it's temperature exactly. Um, in the light part, these colors, the dark part, these colors, cool, warm, cool. Okay, so <laughs> um, green, blue, and Mike says I can use either ultramarine blue or phthalo blue if you want. So that's kind of fun. A little freedom there, a little freedom. I won't get kicked out of the club using the wrong blue, at least not out of Mike's club. <laughs> Okay, now, back to this very important down here, math value. In other words, underpainting, and I'm not I'm far from finished, so I'm kind of lost in making this up a little better. But when I'm done the underpainting, if I were to take a black and white photograph of it, it should look like the finished painting, because values go. We take all the color I've got, so I'm, I'm far from that right now, because... I did, I did, I'm not matching, I'm doing a very good job of matching. So let's, let's go right to where I just left off. This purple down here is in the shade. You can see a lot of stuff. I would never do purple. Purple under, under gray. I would do blue under gray, but I'd never do purple. And I'm going to paint with dirty brushes. And, um, and again, I don't know if I'm painting like a French, like a big potter or not. I, I'm, I feel like a lot of the charm of my painting style is the, how the colors bleed into each other because I paint real messy. And then just clean it up in the, in the final stages. So I'm going to repaint that. I'm not, not going to give up that. So it doesn't need to be dark. It's dark, but well, it's still not dark now. So I'm getting there. Steady for you. <laughs> oh, 
also. Change the picture a little bit. I want a streak of sunlight. I want to need a streak of sunlight coming through on the ground over back here. So I'm going to take that yellow. Yeah, Wait, wait, wait. No, that's gotta be dark. No matter what the photograph is, that's gotta be dark. Um, so it's gotta be blue. There we go. And it's gotta be blue. Okay, did you follow that? So that's it. That's it. That's it. From the shade. Green subject matter trees. Um, what color is this window? The window is basically black, dark gray, very dark. So, so purple. The roof up here, last big shape that I've got from the it's gray, straight up gray. Um, so that's blue. It's mid time, mid 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 warm. So you match warmth and you match value. I could write that on my little cheek here. Match the warmth, so to speak, and match that. So this is blue. In the Dan Nelson part is I don't call him the so I'm violating the big time. But still, you can see that thing has to be um, The sign here is dark. Uh, purple pink here. The value is now much closer. Um, what's in here? I need a little kid in this thing. Now, the baby side of the house, of that palm tree, the baby side of this tree, is green, green in a shade, uh, is neither warm nor cool to the middle. And I'm thinking right, generally right, so green, like green foliage in the shade, Green is not real warm or real cool, it's middle. So I go blue. Mike's not getting any green back today, but I was on sure he's helping me. Um, likewise, down here. Thank <laughs> you. 
some point I'm just going, oh yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> I, I still have quite a bit of work to do to get all the values. So there's two, two primary characters here, a man, a woman, and a dog. And they're, and they're shadows, so yeah. What is this empty spot? One thing I do like about my, my technique is that it's real easy to darken things with layers. I'm still calling that to bear down down with dark green. Um, you know, I just put blue on top of it. Blue goes green for me. Moment when we have two little bits of the canvas that are still white, that's just because I haven't got back to it. This sign right here, the sun coming out. And this umbrella right here. And then the clouds up here. So that lights get a little dark. Okay, now. Um, Okay, so I'm, I'm theoretically I've finished the underpin there, but, but I haven't really. The two things. One is I want to double check all my values. You know, if I took the black and white picture of this right now, would it look like probably the answer? No. <laughs> it's the values I need to do. Um, and uh, now this, what I'm going to do next, and I'm going to take a break here just a second. What I'm going to do next is come in with opaque white. And anything that I want lighter, something almost probably entirely from a light color. Anything I want lighter in between it's light. And after it dries, come back and put yellow or orange on top of it. Top of yellow. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll hold it. I have little details in here. I've, I've lost all the details. Okay, break time. Thanks a lot. Hello, Dan. Welcome back. So I, I spent quite a bit of energy and time. Uh, I think for me the hardest challenge for this the Cape Cod thing is going to be getting the values right. Um, it's going to take me up like several tries before I get it. The values are supposed to be right. You know I'm following this color scheme. I'm not going to go over it. You go back and watch it again if you missed it. Uh, but I haven't done any pencil yet, which kind of kind of unusual for me at this late stage of the painting. I'm very glad to come in here and do some of that now, especially since I have some very prominent figures in this painting. Uh, I think I, I better do some pretty careful drawing. Um, I was just saying yesterday, I think she wants to wake me. Um, these are these are pretty prominent figures. Um, that means and back here I could I could fudge maybe get away with a little bit of sloppiness. But now up here, these, these people are big enough that um, if I don't get them anatomically correct, everybody in the blood is gonna know it. It's just gonna scream out loud. Um, and that is the one thing for the, with the 
pencils. I, I, I'm always saying that I'm not using the pencils primarily for drawing, but for just texture. Okay, well, I'll change that a little bit when I'm, when I'm doing either portraits or um, figures. Now, I'm, I am going ahead and take advantage of the lininess of the pencil screen. Um, but another trick, as I was going to say, I mentioned it yesterday. So the, these, these figures have to be accurate. So I'm going to be zeroing in, uh, drawing a little more carefully than normal, etc. Right? More, there's the word, drawing more carefully than normal. That means when I'm done, and I'm not so much at the pencil stage, but when the painting is nearing its completion, it's very likely that these figures in particular are just going to jump out too much because they're too, they'll have been too carefully drawn, right? It's a common problem. It's like, I mean, if, if you're John Singer Sargent, which I ain't, you can, you can take a mop and throw it down and you get a perfect anatomy. I can't do that, so I've got to do some careful thinking, and then it's overdrawn. Okay, so here's one solution to that is... Take the time, be careful, overdraw, basically is what I'm saying. Go ahead and overdraw the thing. And then after you've painted it, that won't work for the pencils, but after you've painted it, you just come back and intentionally mess it up. Take, take a pencil, or take a brush handle, take a rag, and just just literally just, just do some marks through it. And then clean it up a little bit, whatever, you know, whatever random marks didn't work for you. Uh, but that's, that's a cool trick that I've used not infrequently over the years. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm thinking muscles, I'm thinking knees, I'm thinking calves, I'm thinking feet. All that, all the study that I've done, you know, and continue to do, to try to get anatomy correct. Certainly, I am I'm drawing completely out of my head here. And, I'm not looking at it. It'd be better if I was looking at something, but I'm not. And I'm not going to take time today, I don't think. I might change my mind. Uh, one option would be to, to do, a, in fact, to do, to do a Google search for um, man and woman walking dog. You know, you, you can find, you can get pretty specific with Google and then hit image and see if I can get a perfect man and woman walking a dog. It's possible. Now I'm all curious, I want to just see what I come up with. Um, so I do find that in, in the course of my fine arts career, um, you know, some people maybe can't do this, but you, I feel like you've got to be able to, to draw. And that's, that's why we all do, you know, figure drawing, anatomy drawing. Otherwise, you have to do a vacation, vacation land with no people, or you have to look, find photographs for every dang thing you're trying to, you're trying to do. Anyway, I ramble. So several things here. You know, the trick about messing up is to make it draw it carefully and then go back and mess it up. By the way, I'm really, I'm really getting a kick out of this. So this is me trying to do a combination of a cross between my normal thinking and Cape Cod School. So far, I'm really liking it. Um, Mike came over and showed me. Mike with the Lidair painting, he, he does Cape Cod. That's part of the reason I'm doing it. I had this very green, greenish blue, and he said, well, you can take a tran uh, transparent orange and warm up that green so it's closer. It's going to be eventually a orangish brown because it's gravel, warm gravel. So, okay, got it. Okay, so I'm going to... Again, I'm not going to make you <laughs> watch me do all this drawing, because got, I've got a good bit to do. I'll tell you where I'm going next, and I'll bring you back in, is what I'm doing next on top of it. I'm all this white, everything that's, that I painted recently in white, I'm going to do, if it's in the sun, like I changed my mind, these were going to be in the shade, now I've changed my mind, they're going to be in the sun. Um, I'm going to do transparent color on everything that's white, okay? Cape Cod color. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this is interesting and maybe my little thing. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.
We're getting there. Hey gang, so um, I've done quite a bit of work <coughs> since you were here last. At first I drew everything, uh, went over the whole thing in pencil to get nailed down the, um, nailed down the drawing. I had a bunch of white, I think you saw that, uh, uh, white late added details. And I went over and put color on top of all those white. But I'm going to do that same exact thing one more time. And with Mike's correct uh, critique a minute ago, um, I need more light, which I'm more than happy to do. Because if I was just painting on my own, I would say, yeah, everything's here. It doesn't go light enough. So here we go again. So, uh, and again, this is, this is not unique. This is the way I normally paint, that is, in the acrylic stage. Um, of putting down um, opaque white, sometimes put down thinly, so it's actually translucent white, but I call it opaque white. Um, and then do transparent color on top of it. So basically that's what I'm gonna do. It's just the only difference here is that the color that I'm putting on top of these white bits, my choice of color is going to be informed and influenced by the uh, Cape Cod School of Thinking painting okay and I went over all that at the beginning of this video I'm hoping you saw it if you didn't you can go back and look at it later um, so so far so this is this is an experiment today again in case you missed the beginning of this broadcast this is very much an experiment it's I called it Dan Nelson meets Cape Cod my my approach to painting the one i've been developing for years combined with the sorry i'm talking so haltingly i'm trying to i got my painting brain and my talking brain are stumbling over each other combining with the Cape Cod School of Painting, again, which I'm not going to define again right now. I'm too busy trying to do it. I run out of time and patience to talk about it. And all I'm doing right now is probably, is certainly my last layer of white highlights that I'm going to, now if I were doing my normal, my normal uh, approach to painting, uh, I would, this would be my last layer of acrylics, and then I would do oil glaze over the whole thing. But because I'm trying to chase the um, Cape Cod School of Painting, I am not going to do that. I'm going to do color on top of this white. Which again is not not very not very different from what I normally do. So that's that's not a that is not a stretch. The only thing that's unusual is going to be to some degree in some places the particular colors that I choose to put on top of this white. Okay. Okay. So I have time. I have brain space now to to describe that. Yeah. And in case you missed the beginning of the video. I don't want to go back and watch it. Here it is, Cape Cod School. Let me grab my notes. I gave a, I gave a full-on lecture <laughs> this morning. In the light areas, you use these underpainting colors. In the dark areas, underpainted in these colors. In order from cool to warm, cool to warm. In the light, the coolest is red, medium is orange, yellow is warm. As you know, may know, I quibble about which one of those is warm, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to follow this technique. And in the dark, purple is the coolest, blue is middle, and green is the warmest. Um, the upper layer, the underpainting does, must not equal the 
overpainting. In other words, I don't put a green under green or blue under blue or as much uh, purple under purple. I try to make it something. And the most important thing, the most thing that's possessing me the most, getting the most, requiring the most attention in my case is uh, that the, uh, the values, however, even though the colors are completely cattywampus, not realistic colors at all, uh, the values are supposed to be right on. Okay, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm working. I'm hoping that at the end of this stage right here, that I will achieve that elusive goal <laughs> of having. Um, ah, that's a mistake. I'm, I'm doing a very particular kind of lamp or lantern hanging here on these, on this. The the, the store the, in reality has a cheap version of what I'm drawing. I'm just putting up a higher grade, <laughs> a more expensive light that looks more, looks more like the quintessential um, coastal uh, decor. My last one of the last times I looked at the photograph very carefully, I realized, oh, this right here, that there's, there's sunlight uh, underneath this porch and all the way down, yeah, all the way down here, there's, there's light coming through. Now, if I do that, I'm gonna lose a child that I've painted in there. Hmm, let me decide, which is more important, light or child? Sorry, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is light. <laughs> yeah, the light is more important than the child. Maybe I could put a child behind the mother here. I just I just lost a kid there because he got he got vetoed by light. <laughs> that sounds so terrible. <laughs> And uh, again, if you've missed it earlier, part of the reason I'm doing this is because this is my annual week to paint at uh, Ochre Coat's fifth annual that I'm painting with Mike Rooney, my good buddy, who's right over there on my right painting himself. I don't mean he's painting himself, he's painting a painting of himself. No, by himself. <laughs> and uh, he, he paints, has for years. 10, 12 years, long time, painted in the Cape Cod school. And uh, so there's no time like this moment to experiment, say, hey, maybe I'd like to paint, be influenced by Cape Cod. I'm certainly open, certainly open to new adventures. So I'll give it a try, especially since he's right over there next to me, giving me free tips and advice. Yep, a little bit more light in the sky. So th this next time when I when I do uh, yellow, next time when I do yellow on top of this white, yellow and or orange, um, I'm just going to be careful to keep it a little bit lighter than I did last time. I got a little heavy-handed last time, so that my 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 uh, value uh, range got truncated. So this time. I'm going to keep keep the yellow lighter so that I have a full wide range of values. Yes, in the underpainting state. That's to me that's that's the interesting and challenging part of this technique is I don't have any trouble with the I would say I don't have any trouble with the under the choice of underpainting colors. Um, the unusual part is I'm trying to match values. However dark the final color is going to be, however light or dark the final color is going to be, I want um, I want it to have that same color right here.
and certainly the new values are not a, not a challenge to me. It's my stock and trade play of life. I just need to get used to doing it a different way. It's my time to cook supper tonight. And I've got a lot of work to do to get supper ready. So I'm certainly not going to finish this painting this afternoon, maybe this evening, if I get all ambitious and paint a lot after supper. That remains to be seen. In reality, in this painting, as is often the case, I've removed, I have removed an awful lot of stuff from from, the, from what's really in the picture. In the picture, there's it seems like buildings after building after building back here. And I've, re I've reduced it all down to one uh, pavilion right there. So not realistic in that regard. Not intending to be, not trying to be realistic. Just want to be a good painting. Okay, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. I'm getting a nice center of interest. Okay, so here's that's a good question. What is, where's the focal point on this particular painting? I have a strange answer to that question. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure that there is, it's certainly not clear in my mind, which may be a problem, maybe. Now, I mean, if you haven't been introduced to this concept, you should be. My good friend, David Dunlop, just look him up, look him up. Excellent painter, very, very brainy. <laughs> All those of you who know him are laughing right now. I love him. Very intellectual painter. Um, and uh, I think it was he. He maintains it. No, not all paintings don't all, not all paintings have to have a focal point. There is such a thing as, I don't know, a visual field painting. Not, that's not the best word for it, maybe, but the whole thing is a visual field for exploration, visual exploration. It doesn't, not every good painting has to force your eye to go around a certain pattern. I think that was David Dunlop. Forgive me if I've got that wrong, David. I'm giving you credit anyway. Ski. Hello from Yarmouth. Yarmouth. <coughs> sorry, I missed that earlier. Okay, I am just about finished. Uh, uh, sorry, I was interrupted earlier. My camera battery died when it was plugged in. It's a long story. I won't go into it. Um, I still have things to learn, obviously. Um, I was, I was going to say, I'm not sure where the focal point is. Actually, I kind of do, but here's an important factor. The psychological focal point of this painting is pretty much inescapable. It's psychological. Is this couple, man, woman, dog, that that unit right there? I, I if I try and so I can make the visual focal point somewhere else, um, and and then you're in the interesting uh, tug of war, which can be very interesting visually, if you try to make the physical visual focal point somewhere and the psychological point focal point um, somewhere else just something to keep in mind anytime you put people if they're dominant you know, now these these people this one a little bit if that was the only figure in the painting that would be very that would be a psychological focal point right there 
as subtle as that figure is, but these are very, very quite prominent. Anyway, I've had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, this is, a, of course, a grand experiment, um, and I'm doing it because my mentor, Mike, is right over there, and he's given me lots of tips as I've gone along. Took me a while, I, I will say. Took, you know, obviously, the first time I've ever done it. Um, I had to go back and forth several times before I got it to where I think it's satisfactory. So now I'm going to go into the overpainting, which of course, whoops, I just realized I don't have any. I drew some of these telephone wires or whatever they are. I drew them in with a pencil, but I didn't didn't paint them in. So now I painted that one. Okay, and notice how fat they are, by the way. That's perfectly uh, fine because I'll skinny them up when I do the overpainting. Um, yeah, so I think I think I'm ready to go. This looks exciting. Who knows? Might be a red leather day in my career. Never know. Um, if the, again, theoretically, if I take a black and white photo of this, I might do it just for fun. It should look like a finished painting. The colors aren't right, but the values are. Okay, I'll be back with episode 200 and no, it's 275B when I start the overpainting. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Appreciate it. I look forward to reading your